2021 is here. Thank goodness. So make this the year to focus on you. Start that degree you've been wanting to. You deserve it. Get on the path to greater earning power with a game-changing education from Post University. You've got this because you've got Post. Start by texting POST to 474747. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Is that Shakespeare? Nope, it's Geico. Uh, yeah, 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 that's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works. Oh, it be not for awakening. Nay, give it thou the berries. For 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. No, it's from Geico, because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Here, let's do this. Christopher Media. Let's make some noise. From Asmacore Studios near Detroit, Michigan. Oh, man. It's the Weedsman Podcast. I have no idea what's going on. And now... You have smoked yourself retarded. Here are the Weedsmen. You want to get hot? One, two, three. It's there. Make a wish. I don't know. I did. What? Did make that was so like anticlimactic. I don't know. I'm Chris. I'm Rob. I'm Aaron. Oh, I didn't make a wish on episode 111. Oh, it. well, it's not going to come true now. I, mean, I missed my chance. Yep. Oh. Now I'll have to wait till episode 1111. <laughs> I know, right? Yep. It's going to be a long time. <laughs> it's going to be a hell of a long time. It's a lot of shows. And we're recording this on a Sunday again. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, gentlemen, no for, for being flexible with your schedules. So I got the opportunity to make a little hay while the sun shines. Isn't that what the, uh, the phrase is? Yes. Worked a couple... <laughs> Worked two different jobs two days in a row, so basically had 14-hour days. But in the evening, the sound gigs, there's not a whole lot. But this was, I was doing sound for cover bands that had played at the venue multiple times and it, on a digital mixer, so everything was preset. And then all the guys knew where to hook their shit up. It was a pretty, pretty easy gig. That sounds pretty you know, good. Had some, uh, you know, a couple of feedback squeaks. Until I figured out that the uh, whoever set up the EQ on the board had the high frequencies jacked on some of the mics, and that's what was causing the problem. Very strange EQ choices. But anyway, I don't want to get wonky on the audio yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's interesting working as a sound guy. You get to meet get, interesting people? or oh, I don't know. The, the people who choose to go and talk to the sound guy are special. <laughs> like... Yeah. You know what I mean? Your DJ story was great. The guy. Well, here. first of all, if you're approaching the, the sound guy, the DJ, whoever, you tend to be a certain personality type. But it's narcissistic, not aware of your surroundings, think everything's about you. The lady who came and told me that, listen, um, the sound sounds great out here. But when I was up by the stage and I was next to that big box there, like the vocals were way too loud. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the vocals. That's the vocalist monitor. Yeah, that's right. how a vocalist you can hear himself. Don't, don't stand next to their monitor, and you'll be fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> One day they'll get it. They don't know. Yeah. That's all right. But I mean, a good sound guy around here's probably gotta be hard to come by because a lot of the a lot of this. I use the sound term sound guy loosely with a lot of the guys I encountered being in a band. Yeah. Like, a lot of times it's just, hey, you know how to turn on the board and use microphones. You want to be a sound guy? I don't know why it's so difficult for most sound guys, too, just to do the basics of when I went in, first thing I did, where's the band, introduce myself, talk to them, find the lead vocalist, what's the lowdown on, on what you need. And, you know, thank them afterwards and communicate with them in between sets. Like, I don't know how, I don't know if that's how all sound guys are, um, but from my experience playing shows, you're just another body and they, you, it's like they're herding cattle. Like, get one band on, get them off, make right. sure nothing feeds back next. They don't need, they don't, they want as little interaction with you as possible. Like, you're the mm -hmm. bass player, and you hand him a cable. Oh, hey, I got a really nice DI. Oh, don't tell me my business. Look, I already <laughs> got this set up to run smooth. Don't fuck with it. Like, sound guys are just assholes. 
generally. So I, so I yeah. try not to feed into that stereotype. But then, you know, people harass you with dumb questions or... Think you know, you're the DJ. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mistaken like, identity. Hey, I can't hear the vocalist when I stand behind this pole. <laughs> like, uh, okay. I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> in bet- I got the guy that was requesting music in between bands. I'm like, I'm just doing the sound for the band. Like, right. I have no controls for selecting music. And he was like, he didn't believe me. You know, oh, fuck you, man. No. I'm like, no, really. They just, they pipe hey, in music from somewhere. Consider me fucked. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, then plug my phone in. No, I'm not plugging your phone in so we can hear Duran Duran from your phone. Right. You know, right? I'll just hold it by the speak or by the mic. What? (laughs) Hey, shithead. It's not all about you. At no point, you know, nobody goes into any establishment and thinks, oh, I should see if they have a phone, uh, a headphone jack so I can plug in my iPod and play some music that I want to hear right now. Right. But you see a sound guy, and you're like, oh, it's possible now. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hey, you can plug in my phone, and I can, you know, listen to to the sweet playlist on my Spotify. And I'm like, yes, I am a sound guy. Anything is possible. I'm just not going to. (laughs) Come on, buddy. This releases on the day that Luke Cage drops. Yeah. You excited now that you've seen the promos? Yep. I even started getting back into Daredevil again. I gave the yeah. first episode another try. You this time in? I made through it. How did? So how's it going? I mean, did you get deep or? No, no, no. I was just, just on the first the episode. Yeah. I just finished it. So I'm going to try and go and finish it. I don't know. The cool thing about that is like, it's like with the comics. You don't have to read all the Marvel comics. You decide which ones appeal to you. Right. I mean, we are getting to that point where there's going to be so much of this shit that you don't have to watch everyone who puts on a superhero costume. Right. You can go, well, you know, I'm really into this, or I like following this character, or this writer, or something like that. This is, you know, Marvel's going to do what they did with uh, Jessica Jones and take a practically unknown and make everyone talk about them. Right. Luke Cage is all the, <laughs> Why did they, oh, they like try to take out the dialogue so they just had the music? Yeah. They did a phase flip. That's what they did. They flipped the phase on one channel and it cancels, cancers. cancels. <laughs> it cancels out the center channel. And, mm-hmm. and what's mostly in the center channel are lead vocals or dialogue. So that gets canceled out and you're left with a nice stereo image of music with some warbly vocals in the center. And this is uh, what now? Yeah. <laughs> it says Marvel Luke Cage theme. Luke Cage theme. Probably what? a fighting game. Yeah, this, not, this is definitely like fighting yeah. game video. Yeah. Video game fighting. Combo. I can't, why Bonus can't I combo. It? Fighting video game music. Fighting video. I can't say shit. Oh my god! Oh, it's too soon. Don't, we can't oh. go off the rails yet. Yeah. Marvel's new thing. They're releasing a series of one thousand dot to dot books. Not a thousand books, but a, the pictures have one thousand dot to dots in them. You know, because coloring books are all the rage. Right. <laughs> so why not the dot? Really? I, <laughs> What's coming back next? Seek and finds? Like, how retarded is right. it society need to be? <laughs> they need to be entertained constantly. Huh? Adult pacifiers? What's the next craze? <laughs> Adult pacifiers would probably go over huge. Those big crayons are coming back from Crayola, you know, for small right. hands. Duplo. 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 A Duplo movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that Wu Tang music is actually in the the trailer. Uh, in the trailer, yeah. You know what draws your eye when you look at that? The crown. This is gonna be the wire of superhero wire. TV shows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Might be. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Because everybody wants to be the king. I mean, just the the little bit in that he was in Jessica Jones. I'm guessing that's where he's fighting. Just his face getting pissed every time he gets punched, or like you know, people <laughs> shoot him and he just like 
<laughs> he doesn't get super mad ragey, but you can see, like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, what is this from, Aaron? Is this from Jessica right. Jones? Supposedly previous. Yeah, this is for oh. Luke Cage. Wow. The bullets are ricocheting yeah. off of him. I'm about sick of always having to buy new clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be too, man. I would be pissed as hell. <laughs> oh. He just disintegrate his hand on his yeah. chin. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he just palmed the barrel of a yeah. gun and like took the bullet. There it is. You want some? No. I might be interested in this show. Yeah, oh yeah, it looks good, man. That show's badass. Still not sure what I am. I'm just living my life, day to day. You should be out there helping people. You think I asked for any of this? Hey, that's right. That's uh, uh, some tank like Radio Raheem. Fish. Yeah. Came out with oh, abilities. he just, just passed died. away. I just want to be left the hell. Yeah, he just passed away. When? That would be a waste. Today, I thought. What? Yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday. What? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I can't remember the actor's name. Fuck. Oh god, I typed in Radio Ra, Ra yeah. and I got Radio Rahim dead. Bill Nunn, who played Radio Rahim, dies at sixty-three. Man. Yep. Said Bill Twenty sixteen body count. God damn it. Mm-hmm. Bill Nunn was the black Ron Perlman. And now he's <laughs> dead. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. Black Ron Perlman? Black Ron Perlman, yep. He had that face. He played. I don't. I never saw him do, like get any leads or anything. But he was always a standout. Anytime he popped up on TV or in a movie. Where are you headed? You going down the south? Is he going to show him the rings? This is my favorite part. Back there, right? The rebound. All right. Oh shit! Yeah. That's the height. Newest, latest. Love and hate rings the across the knuckles. Right hand, left hand. It's a tale of good and evil. Hate. It was with this hand that Cain iced his brother. Love. These five fingers, they go Static. One hand is always fighting the other hand. And the left hand is kicking much ass. I mean, it looks like the right hand love is finished. But hold on, stop the presses. The right hand's coming back. Yeah, he got the left hand on the ropes now. That's right. Yeah. Ooh, it's a devastating right and hate is hurt. He's down. Ooh, ooh, left hand hate KO'd by love. I love you. I love you. But if I hate you, there it is. Love and hate. I love you. Wait, <laughs> Raheem, check the legs. Peace. I love the scene when he goes into the uh, the convenience store. They're yelling at him, turn the radio down. And he's asking for D cell batteries. Yeah. <laughs> D, motherfucker, D. <clears throat> yeah, he was in New Jack City. Mm-hmm. He was in the Spider-Man trilogy. Who did he play in Spider-Man? Yeah, I'm trying to remember who he, he was. He was uh, um, Robbie Robertson. That's who it was. Hell of a name. Yeah. He's a singer, Robbie Robertson, isn't he? From the band. Yeah, from the band. Do we know like what happened? He died at 63. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like heart attack or something. Let's see Same here. Uh, I got uh, New York Times up here. It's announced by his wife. Okay. It doesn't. I don't see it anywhere Whoa. here. Was this the Skrillex remix? Yeah, the Apex Twin mix. Yeah, what the hell is going on? 
Oh, he's in Sister Act. That's right. Yeah, he was the police officer. Yes. Or the agent. Yep. He was offering the protection. Hey, speaking of Sister Act, I listened to a recent, I think it was a, a rebroadcast of Star Talk with my hero, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, he's ever uh, seen the show or or listened to his podcast. I the not. show. I uh, started watching Cosmos. Good. It's the very one good. season. Cosmos. It got really one season. He yeah. He does this, uh, they have this kind of unique format where he does a one-on-one interview, but then he plays that interview during the podcast, and him and usually two other people will deconstruct that interview it's actually a really cool conversation because they talk about her love for uh, sci-fi and star trek and how seeing ohura was an inspiration to her because uh, and she was actually in uh the next generation star trek i believe yes yeah reached out to gene roddenberry to be on the show and explained to him that like seeing ohura ohura on star trek was the first time she ever saw a black person in space and Gene Roddenberry wasn't aware that 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 was like a big deal to him. It was just like, yeah, there's black people in space, right. you know. <laughs> of course, there's every race in space. But they also talked at length about medical marijuana. Oh, nice! And she talked about. Uh, I think this was before. So, so some more talk about space. Yeah, right. yeah. And she she talked at length about her uh, her use of medical marijuana. Mostly, she uses vape pens. Nick. Concentrate. Yeah, and Should she also clear. uses she uses low THC, high CBD stuff to manage menstrual cramps. Well, we've talked about before. Um, mm-hmm. What's the name of the product that she was promoting? Was hers the spray? No, the spray on stuff. Or I think hers was the tincture. Either way, this song was in the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking for a new product to curb your menstrual cycle pains? Whoopi yeah. Goldberg. Nice toast. <laughs> yeah. I can't come up with clever wordplay for something with no and period right now. I just can't. You know, like menstrual no. Menstrual, you know, yeah. stoppy period, menstrualomus, no. period See. stopper. Got to workshop it. Yeah, play around with it. Come back to me when you get some better. Menstrualomus, menstrual. Aunt, no. Mm. It's to ease the pain. Uh, uh, uh. Will be Goldberg's coochie cream. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. Oh, okay. Uh, that's actually I'm 100 percent sure that's what it's called now. Yeah, <laughs> that is what it's called. It, it keeps the hoochie in the coochie. <laughs> Menstradamus. I can't get that. Menstradamus. Instead of whoopee like, cushion, you have whoopee coochie. Like you could have whoopee. a uh, like a phone in service where women would call you and say, "Am I going to have my? I have a, an event this weekend. Am I going <laughs> to get my period?" Uh, uh, no, no, mm. you're good. <laughs> I'm like uh, I'm sensing light flow. As long as it doesn't involve swimming, you should be fine. Yeah, don't stress yourself out. Oh well, hell! If you're on the phone, you could just hang up. Yeah, and pretend you got disconnected. Hey, why would you do that? Wow, I don't care. Pretend you get out of it. Why uh, would you get out of it? You want people to call you. Yeah. No, you're setting up a service for people to call you to Come find on, out dude. when their menstrual cycle is But what they don't know hit. is you always get... And then you panic and hang up every cool. time they ask you when. Yeah, until yeah. somebody puts a review up of the Why phone service that? and says... Why yeah, would you do that? You're char- probably charging up. by the minute. Right. Yeah, instead, you'd be like, Speaks. I'm... Uh, hmm. Hmm. Let me Are you holding a maxi pad in your hands this. now? All right. So, my ludicrous idea... Is apparently more ludicrous than yes. your ludicrous idea. Yeah. Well, at yeah, least you're hanging up on people. Well, at least mine follows through on the ludicrous idea. <laughs> right. At least he's helping someone. Mine goes to the other side of ludicrous. Probably goes to that mentally retarded stage. Someone said something about ludicrous. Whoa. Yes, no. Speaking of ludicrous. Oh. Yeah. I actually might, since I have nothing to do tomorrow night, 
and we'll probably watch in real time the debates and just get high as fucking laugh. All the debates tomorrow, huh? Yeah. I'm going to go to the dispensary stock up. There you go. If Trump drops an F-bomb, I want to know, do they have him on a seven-second delay? Call her a cunt. That's all I want him yeah. to do. Call her a or cunt. Anything. I bet you have a huge cunt. Yeah, but she's a huge cunt. <laughs> you know, right after all that shit happened last week, too, it would be a great debate. Oh, it would be Wh- fantastic. Which shit? Yeah. Everything. Which shit? The entire contents of last week. I saw uh, Maureen Dowd was on Bill Maher's show this weekend. Was she down out? No, oh, well, she yeah. was actually. <laughs> she was. She said she had a fever. Oh, I think it was too many pot brownies <laughs> again. <laughs> Jesus, come on, Maureen. But she was talking about. She's interviewed um, the the Bushes numerous times and. Said that, uh, well, I guess the uh, senior, the elder Bush. <laughs> elder Bush. Yes. Elder Bush. El- Elderberry Bush. Came out this week in support of Hillary Clinton. That's how much he hates Trump. Damn. And even when Ted, in the same week that Ted Cruz finally said, fine. Yeah. I'll suck the Trump dick. Just don't kick me off the team. Even though he insulted at him, so. <laughs> So yeah, Ma- Maureen Dowd was on there, and she's describing uh, hanging out with the the elder Bush and witnessing him throw his shoe at the TV when the Trump elder came Bush. out. <laughs> he threw his shoe at he the th- TV. He threw his shoe at the TV. When what was, is this? 1956. I don't know. Get this bullshit out of here. Out of the Elvis <laughs> playbook, he couldn't find a gun, so he threw his shoe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what an eighty-something-year-old guy would do, anyway. Yeah, throw it makes shoe. sense. You don't give a fuck. This asshole the fuck out of here. It's like, fuck this TV. The old, I was hanging out with the elder bush. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like code. Yeah. If you will find me near the elder bush, <laughs> I'll have a secret for you. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Sounds like some D&D. <laughs> you yeah. come upon an elder bush. An do you orc. pick it? Yeah. Or do you an set orc comes out it? from behind it and attacks the whole party. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> I think I just outed myself yeah. in front time. of all of the listeners. Yeah. Of, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. It's bound to happen. Yep. I got a D20 somewhere in this house. It's my D20. <laughs> Your D20. I needed it every night for every Tuesday. Makes sense. I I'd just like, like to see my, that. dice were my favorite part of that. They shit. were they were talking about re- getting it back on online. I was like, guys, like I'm an adult now. Yeah, like, <laughs> I got shit to do. Like, I've got a life. I can't do this. I, I can't dedicate eight hours every Tuesday to this shit. Right? Because it was go get to my buddy's house at like eight or nine o'clock, and then you, you leave when the sun comes up. Jesus, people got to go to work. Kids <laughs> are getting up for school. Well, well yeah, making be- coffee because it's not. It's not one of those things that you can stop well, too, it's, halfway through. It's, 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 right? D&D is not something you do for a couple hours. Yeah. Mm. Right. There, there's never been a two-hour game session ever. Yeah. Mm. Quick game of D&D? No. It doesn't exist. Said no game player ever. Yeah, you want to play a quick game of D&D? No! It's on myself. Yeah. I was... One of the podcasts that I listen to on a weekly basis is uh, Jay and Miles Explain the X-Men. And for a special episode they did recently, they actually uh, did a live a recording of their, their role-playing of... Uh, well, it wasn't a... It was a, a, an X-Men game that was adapted for that particular podcast, I guess. And I don't know if they did this just for the podcast sake or if this is standard practice or this what what goes down i mean they they kind of acted everything out it was more like a table read right really? now did you ever get into it to the point where you were like my character is saying this like unless oh, no, it, we would talk as our characters we didn't have voices would. but we would <laughs> act as our characters you had a voice really don't lie to me see we were we were very clinical about it we were like just like my character is doing this and that, my character is like going this way, and and if you actually like voiced something, it would be a command or something like "follow me" or "watch out." <laughs> you know, my character warns them verbally. You know, we'd say shit like that. Other than we would we would never like act it out verbally. 
Although we would get really into our characters, we would never act as them. And we never dressed up either. No LARPing in my time. <laughs> but I realized... <laughs> we, 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 we investigated LARPing for maybe a month. Yeah. All yeah. right. And we now were, there is an investment. And we were going to... Yeah. You know, and we, had, we had started to make plans to do it. And then really? my one buddy, who was like spearheading the whole thing... He pulled out the last minute. He... Uh, all right. Like... Buying, like, PVC pipe and making weapons and making costumes, uh, he was all for it. Right. Yeah. But when it came to acting it out, this was a bridge too far for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> to which my one friend then retorts, so that's like saying, well, you know, yeah. like, I'll suck a dick, but I won't take one in my ass. Right. <laughs> like, I think it's more like, I'll put the condom on, but I gotta put it inside the pussy. Right. Like, oh, I guess. Like, you're already there. Like, finish finish what you started. Like, yeah. Why would yeah. you go that far and stop short? Yeah. That's crazy. Like, yeah. He, or more uh, aptly, man. it's like when a chick gives you a handy, but she doesn't let you come. That's what I mean. The, uh, I've never had that. my commentary on that one. You gotta go. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out. It happens. It happens out there. Uh, yeah. Sad. sad. <laughs> uh, uh. Ooh, and that happened. I'm sorry. What are we smoking? No, uh, something <laughs> in the nature of uh, nothing that smells like Chris's farts. Moby Dick. That is what we are smoking this week. A uh, a. I believe it's a sativa. Sativa. Yep. But uh, Moby Dick. Yes. Is it? It is the strain this week. Uh, originating I'm- in Amsterdam and currently bred at the D- the Dyna Femme Seeds. Uh, Moby Dick is high H high THC content, makes it's one of the most strongest sativas. Winner of Girl of the Year by cannabis newspaper Soft Secrets. In 2010, uh, the strain is a cross between indica dominant hybrid White Widow and Sativa Haze. Uh, the former is known for its power, while the latter is its cerebral stimulation, creating a most sativa plant, uh, mostly sativa plant that it delivers a charged buzz. The strain is also favored in its short flowering period, mold resistance, and high yield, making a grower favorite. However, this plant does require more attention and care. The aroma is a sweet citrus from the haze, which dominates the palate with vanilla and eucalyptus tones. Wow. Mm-hmm. Did you get all that? <laughs> I got it. I, yeah, I'm definitely getting that kind of heady buzz that you get from sativas. It's almost like it's got a little caffeine kick to it. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that too, man. It's but you know they say tingly scalp action. I'm enjoying. It's very nice. So I keep itching my face. I feel like the cat rubbed up on my face. Yeah, little bit of nummy lipness. Yeah, lippy numbness. But the top five are uh, euphoric. Effects are happy, relaxed, uplifted, and creative. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's a stress reliever, though. Powerful. This is a good strain if you want to make a techno track. Mm hmm. Perfect. All right, let's try this one. Oh, there we go. A smoke we? track. You guys know this band, Tortoise? No. Band from Chicago? No. I think I've heard the name before. This is one of my favorite songs to like chill out to. Mostly instrumental band. This. Not so much in production, but in arrangement. This reminds me of like a Frank Zappa song. That reminded me. I want to push. I want to throw a song at you guys and see what you think. Okay. And this is fucking cool. This is from. Oh, this album wasn't that long ago. The song's called Salt the Skies from the album It's All Around You. Yeah, they're an instrumental band. No vocalist. Badass. Yeah, they 
It started out mostly as like a guitar driven quartet. They've definitely branched out in more recent years with the synthesizers and stuff. Oh, picking up. One of the the main members is John McIntyre, who has produced. Oh shit! <laughs> it's like, totally me- like a metal riff. Yeah, yeah, it's totally metal, isn't it? It's a totally metal riff. Yeah. So John McIntyre is in Tortoise, and another great band, The Sea and Cake. If you like this stuff, but wish it had poppier hooks and lyrics, Sea and Cake is a band to check out. This, this is fucking sweet. Like, I want this to be a soundtrack for a new 007 movie or something, you know? Yeah, good word for it. Daniel Craig smoking somebody to this song. Yeah. This could be the yeah. This should be the the sound trick for the final climactic uh, conflict. Nice. Yeah, villain, the protagonist, and antagonist in their final battle. What do you think? Your third act confrontation. Yes. So, Mister Bond, I expect you to die. Is that, uh, those vibes that he's playing? It's not a xylophone. Xylophones are more yeah. clunky, like woody sounding, right? Yeah. No, those, yeah, those are vibes. Yeah. So but an electric like piano. metal with the uh, glass tubes, yes. something like that, yeah. And they got the pedal where you can make them tremolo. Right. So cool. That's badass. Tortoise, you say? Tortoise, yeah. If you like instrumental rock and you like creative stuff, all right, so to check out. This could be a dud. This mm-hmm. would be the second time I'm hearing this, but I caught the end of this the other day in a rental car. I'm like, my first thought when I heard this song, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Because it, it, I, I, maybe I'll be wrong upon re-listening to it, but I swear to God, I caught some kind of Frank Zappa vibe out of this song okay. by this person, which caught me by surprise because uh, what I was from this person's newest album was it was supposed to be country so we'll see and who is this or am I supposed to guess <laughs> you'll know when they start singing okay I already hate the sound of those guitars or ukuleles from in New York City from that fine red wine off a of vine to cheap brown whiskey Oh, that's Steven Tyler. Yes. Seattle coffee, Memphis blues, Chi-Town wind, oh, shit. Cruise, Do you guys know about the operation that he had? No. Give me some love. It's fucking insane. He ruptured his vocal cords. Like, he was hitting, uh, I think it was the, the high note from, uh, um, What's their big hit? Dream On? Yeah, the Dream On. Where he's, Dream On! 
Grandma! And just fucking something snap. Like, there's basically two little stretched ligaments that go over these folds of skin that form the vocal cord, right? Mm-hmm. And one of those snapped. And he had an operation to reattach it. Damn. And this was, I wish I could remember what show. I think it was a TED Talk. It was a TED Talk. It was on one of their podcasts recently, and they talk about the operation, and they have uh, audio of him performing Dream On after the surgery. And you definitely hear the raspiness, you know, but it's not extreme, and he's pitch perfect. I mean, say what you want. I, I'm not a big fan of Aerosmith because I, I just don't think most of the songs that they write and perform are all that good. But you can't say that Steven Tyler is not a fantastic vocalist. True. He's he is, good at singing. He is yeah. one of the best vocalists out there. I mean, like, for male vocalists, for male pop vocalists, him and Chris Cornell are like, like the two tops in my book. And where's the song? Like, and I don't like a lot of Chris Cornell's solo work, but you gotta, you gotta give it to him still. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, where's his what? No, I was just saying, where's, where's this song going? Because it starts out country and like... Like this? you see what I'm saying? Like I came in in the middle, I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is kind of... like it's, I like the horns it's and stuff, listenable. but... Like, I haven't listened like anything he's been involved in for a good 25 years. Yeah. This is a, a shit ton better than anything I've heard from Aerosmith since 78. Mm. There's some footage of him, like, walking down the street. Shooting and, people that he meets, fully loaded Tommy gun. And he's, there's a guy busking on the, on the street, and he starts playing. He, like, sees Steven Tyler, I believe, is what happens in the video. He sees Steven Tyler, he starts playing an Aerosmith song. And Steven Tyler just like sidles up next to him and starts singing. Oh, gross. Oh, this song. What song is this? Oh, Crying? It's the f- no, it's the fucking uh, Armageddon, Armageddon song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate this song. <laughs> Don't fuck up, buddy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's an easy song. Right. <laughs> I mean, song blows. Yeah, the song blows. Yeah. But he didn't I'll, write it. It's not his song. Doesn't matter. They bought this song from some Nashville country writer. How, how cool is Steven Tyler? That's the point of the video, and I think pretty damn cool. It makes me hate him kind of more, actually. Really? Come on. Because this is kind of like a big ego stroke, if you think about it. He was sitting there watching this kid perform, and he was like, fuck it, he's doing my song. Let, let me go do it right. with him. So let, me he's totally- well. let me help out Panama Jack. <laughs> the guy looks scared. Yeah, shitless. Like, I don't know if he... Knows that that's Steven Tyler, or if he thinks that that's a Steven Tyler impersonator is like, fucking with him. Who the fuck him. are you? <laughs> he's either Star Trek, starstruck, or he's scared as fuck. Right. So Bob Kane, the man who invented Batman, mm-hmm. the co-creator, during the '60s when Batman was seeing a resurgence, the comic books were hitting it, uh, hitting good, and uh, and the television show was on. Some people started seeing. The subtext, well, I don't know if you can call it subtext if it's not intended by the author, but the homosexual undertones of the Batman-Robin relationship. Hmm. There's this article in CBR that talks about Paul San, who wrote a well-timed book called Bad Follies and Delusions of the American People. And the article uh, says that uh, the idea of homosexuality in the context of the Batman character, and he, oh, and he actually... Um, he interviews Bob Kane for a reaction to this. But this is what Bob Kane says. Batman is the epitome of virility and manliness. Just the opposite image of the fag. Wortham read homosexuality into this thing because I had a man and a boy living in a big house together. 
in the same bedroom. Show the pictures, Rob. Look at the pictures. Yes. There's a visual companion here. I'm looking at them on my phone, too. Do you see, like, there's the ones of them rowing in the boat together, just yeah. like whatever. But the, the one where they're sleeping in the same bed. That's a little odd. It's like, why would they yeah. sleep in the same goddamn bed? They're in a mansion. Yeah. They may be they, in the same group. A like, cold shower, a big breakfast. Right. Or d- they gotta whoa. knock down the wood. They don't yeah. want, they don't want to be having a sword fight in the shower. Right. Dick, let's go in there. <laughs> And, uh, let's see, uh, worth and read in homosexuality into this thing because I had a man and a boy living in a big house together in the same bedroom with just a butler and no female around. Okay, well. Yeah. What would you think? Did you hear that out loud, buddy? <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> like, on, I'm going to read that back to you and you tell me yeah. if you still uh, disagree. Doctor read homosexuality into it through his eyes, but for that of the man... But for that matter, he also put down the Wonder Woman comic as a lesbian invention. Uh, it's all, it was all hogwash, but it had to do had to do with something. Wait, it was all hogwash, but I had to do something about it anyway. So I changed their bedrooms and I added Aunt Harriet. <laughs> Even so, I suppose the homosexuals like the TV show because of those tight outfits Adam West and Burt Ward wear. I imagine they sit around watching them on the screen and slap each other on the knees with the sheer joy of it all. But what can you do about that? I can't change the characters because they weren't homos in the first place and because you <laughs> have to be crazy to fight success. At least he was smart about it, even if he was homophobic. Right. And this uh, that's, I mean, this is, this is. if that's the extent of his imagination on, on what homosexuals' reactions to Batman and Robin's relationship might be, then I think he is straight. This is definitely not a doth protest too much situation <laughs> yes that's what they do they sit around and slap their slap each other's knees yeah all right time for bong hits <laughs> i don't fucking remember i'm high <laughs> the news do the fucking news <laughs> cannabis was in the news big time this week oh and may play more of an important factor than you might initially think when hearing the story of Keith Lamont Scott, this is the man who oh, was... Oh, I was reading that today. I wanted to tell you guys about it, but apparently you already read about it. But the, this is the man who was rolling a blunt in his car. And, yeah. And supposedly, according to the officer who shot and killed Keith Lamont Scott, he was uh, also had a firearm on him. He yeah. supposedly flashed the piece, too. Right, so because you didn't know they were cops, well, the I'm police. Guessing. The police story was they were they were in the area to serve a a, a warrant. Observed uh, Mr. Scott rolling a blunt in his car, and since it wasn't why they were there, they didn't think it was important. But then they saw him produce the piece. That's when they pr- approached the car, asked him to exit the car, leaving the piece inside the the weapon. According to the police, he came out with the gun in his hand, and that's why they shot him. Now, uh, at first glance, the, the the presence of marijuana seems to be not really a factor, right? It was. It might have been what made him stand out to the, the police in the first place, because this is in uh, North Carolina, right? Correct. Yeah. This is in North Carolina. They don't have a legal... Uh, cannabis program in that state it is illegal but it's usually not worth the cops time especially if they're there to do a legitimate job of you know serving a warrant the interesting thing is that in north carolina they have an open carry law so it's completely legal to have a gun i mean i mean he could have been like cleaning it checking it doing something it's if he had a permit for it he'd have every right to have the gun and have it in his hand and walk around with it the problem comes with why did the police suspect him in the first place? There was an interview with a lawyer on NPR today that I heard, and they were talking about this case. And if it does go to court, how they how are they going to look at it legally and decide if this was a what they might call a just killing, or if this was uh, this was an innocent man being gunned down? And the difference comes with why why did they approach him in the first place? If um, if merely having a weapon on you in public in North Carolina is not illegal, then 
they have what cause do they have to say to ask a person to exit the vehicle or put their hands up or anything they're not doing anything wrong mm-hmm. right there's no present cause there's no uh there's no just cause for them to just ask a person who has a weapon on them to do anything really to be a, they're, they're not a suspect so that really leaves the presence of cannabis as the only illegal activity that he was visibly uh, con- conducting. So you have to decide, like, if this goes to trial as a jury, is it enough just cause to assume that somebody, if you can't assume that somebody with, with a weapon in public is a threat because you're in an open carry state, can you then say that the presence of marijuana makes the person a threat? The, the way the lawyer explained it is you have, imagine a spectrum. On one end, you have walking around with a weapon and littering, right? And on the other hand, you have breaking into a car with a weapon on you that you don't use. So in, in one instance, on one side, you have this minor infraction that most cops aren't even going to deal with, right? So, but you are performing, it is illegal to litter, Right. So you walking around with a gun, performing something illegal, like littering, there's no just cause for a cop to you know, say, hey, put your hands up. Let me see. Are you registered for that weapon? You know, that would be ridiculous. Now, if you found them with a weapon and breaking into a car, well, then, yes, you would have just cause to tell them to put their weapon down, put their hands up, and further investigate the situation. Yeah, how about yeah? Where yeah does, that thought when I was thinking, why, how is having weed a threat? Right. So where the question the lawyer presented was, where does this fall on that spectrum? Does it fall closer to the littering side or the uh, breaking or the grand theft auto side? So it's it might be an interesting case just based on the fact that the presence of cannabis is going to be the key deciding factor on whether this was. A just killing or an unjust killing. It's messed up. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Another, the other really big story. The two big stories of the week. Hey, Arnold Palmer died. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yep. Stack another one, just 2016. Stack. Let's just, can we just keep some on a, a website with a running list of currently alive celebrities and we can just check that every now and again? I'm going to have an Arnold Palmer short. after the show. Yeah. Let's come tribute. Let's cover. Pour a little out for my homie. Well, people may be grieving for the loss of Arnold Palmer, but I think more people are tore up over the loss of Brangelina. Eh. No, not on this end, but yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are. That is what I stated. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are upset over Brangelina. Would you agree with that? Sure. Floyd. Michael Rappaport. <laughs> Oh man, I didn't even hear. But because the, in this famous split, one of the reasons for Angelina Jolie asking for a divorce is Brad Pitt's supposed excessive use of marijuana. I think they're playing <laughs> Aerosmith, ironically. Oh yeah, they are. Oh wow. Steven Tyler's second appearance on the podcast. Pitt's love of weed created what Jolie considered an inappropriate environment for their children. Oh, oh boy. I mean... He did get in a fuel truck and leave as soon as the plane landed. That... Yeah. That was a great story. I don't know if that's true or not. Reported by several... But it's a great fucking story. Do you hear that one, Rob? What? What? He he got Uh, shit-faced on a plane. He was, like, on a private jet, wasn't he? With, like... With Angelina Jolie and their kids. You live here? And he got shit faced and went on a rampage. <laughs> and then when they landed, he got off the jet. Yeah. yeah well, maybe and, uh, oh, look. The, from Detroit. There's Tyler James Jet Gandolfini. Oh, yeah, man, I know him. They've been right. by here. You seen them? Mm-hmm. They stay in here? No, they're staying at the <laughs> Safari Motor. Motel in. <laughs> so he gets off the jet and drunkenly gets in. What was it? Again? It wasn't this. It was like a utility truck, right? A fuel truck. Fuel truck. He got in a fuel truck and tried to drive away. Nice. Go there. What a nice guy. And they went. 
Yeah. Yeah. Safari Safari Motel. Safari Motel. Uh -huh. Hey, you want to watch some TV or something? Rather have them high than drinking, no, no, apparently. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, you take care. I might be back. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like the drinking's a, a worse problem than the cannabis. Right. Yeah. Cannabis. Cannabinoids. Me, man. Fucking kill you, man. <laughs> kind of sent me. Hey, you should hit us up on yeah. social media. You can direct message us. You could be part of the show. We could call. Hey, yeah, let's do that. If you want us to call yes. you up, or maybe we'll Skype you or something. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. can all burn something together. PM us your your contact info. Yeah, and we not... can call you. I don't know, like, because we want to do it when somebody's actually smoking. Right. That was fortunate. We caught them while there was. You right, know, just about to go die, you know. See, I think if we put the call out live on our Twitter feed and Instagram and whatnot, we can we could do Let's this. Try both. We could do this in real time. Just do both. I think he just said that. Yeah. 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 We'll try to set them up, and we'll try to get them live. All right. You ever been fishing? You got to put more than one rod in the water. That's why I don't catch anything. Well, you know, if you want to be a commercial fisherman. No. <laughs> like Billy Joel talks about in the Down Easter I think Alexa. They nets. Yeah. Big nets. And hooks. Lots of hooks. And bait. They must go through a lot of hot dogs and bait. worms and those big commercial shipping vessels. I like the bait. Thank you for downloading the Weedsman Podcast for free on iTunes or and Google Play. ChristopherMedia.net and Google Play. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Please make sure to rate this show, The Weedsman Podcast, five stars on iTunes. Make sure you rate it five. Yep, five. And help to tell and help to tell others about The Weedsman Podcast by leaving a comment. Thank you for following The Weedsman on Twitter. At The Weedsman 420. And on Instagram. At The Weedsman Podcast. Please follow The Weedsman on Facebook and like and share The Weedsman and Christopher Media. And all of our shows. Yeah. Hey, sign that petition. Sign the petition. Yeah, yeah what? for Christopher. Chris, for Lewandowski. Oh, Christopher Lewandowski. Marine that's right. Chris Lewandowski. Yep. Got till like what October nineteenth. Yep. Gotta get so it in. still a couple more weeks. Do that shit. We please. Got a, we got a few hundred. You enjoy get, the show. Let's get please. some more. Do it. Do it. Do it. Let's get. Oh, we need Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. Uh, please visit ChristopherMedia.net for all of the other podcasts available on the Christopher Media Network. You can check out uh, this show. Uh, yeah. They are checking out this show. <laughs> yeah. What else can they check Thank out? You. The Beer Nuts. There oh. we go. Oh, yeah. I like beer. Beer tastes good. Yeah. Make beer now. Made it twice. If you like beer or you're interested in making beer or uh, just like hearing guys talk about beer, check That's out right. the Beer Nuts. Yeah. Check them out. Uh, it's, uh, beer nuts could pour some out for Arnold Palmer. There you go. Uh, if you would like to donate to the Weisman Podcast, you can click on the PayPal button at ChristopherMedia.net. If you use Amazon.com, please click and bookmark the Amazon link at ChristopherMedia.net. It won't cost you any extra money. It'll help you to support the Weisman Podcast. Uh. If you're looking to launch your own website, please click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Christopher Media uses the HostGator to host all the shows produced by Christopher Media Network. When you click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net and sign up for HostGator, you are helping to support the Weedsman Podcast. Bro! Yeah. Yeah, it's that time. Yeah. Who's good? Bro basket. Bro, bro. We know that choosing the perfect gift for a man is a difficult task, but not anymore. Bro. The BroBasket.com is here to help. Oh, uh, right. yeah. We all know that men are hard to shop for, too. Yeah, that's right. What do they actually like their favorite alcohol? Alcohol. That's what. Could be craft beer, wine, whiskey, scotch, or tequila. The BroBasket.com will put it in a gift basket full of their favorite gear and goodies. You can customize your own bro basket or choose from a variety of different bro baskets, like the Ultimate Import Sampler, the Jack and Coke gift set, or the Junior Executive gift basket. Boozeless but still cool bro baskets are also available. BroBasket.com gives you many shipping options to choose from, including rush delivery and Saturdays. 21 and over, please. State and local laws apply. 
Beer, wine, and liquor are not available for shipping in all states. Bro. Bro. Trying to look up. You can help support Christopher Media by clicking through the brobasket.com banner at christophermedia.net. Ben used to be hard to shop for. Not anymore. Not anymore. The brobasket.com is here. Bro. Bro, bro, bro. Oh, that's for that. I was hoping that was the screaming bro. <laughs> yeah. It's the yeah. only other bro I had. Bro us out, bro. 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 What's that screaming bro? The screaming bro. I don't even know, bro. Sounds like a drink. I had four screaming bros. <laughs> and a flaming mo. And a what fart? That's a screaming bro. Stay high. Stay, Stay high. high. If you enjoy this show and want more people to know about it, head on over to iTunes, leave a comment, and rate it five stars. Make sure you like and share us on Facebook, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Just search for Christopher Media. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Most importantly, we would like to take the time to extend an extra special thanks to you. Christopher Media could not exist without your support. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net, and thank you for listening Christopher Media let's make some noise thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more is that Shakespeare nope it's Geico uh, yeah 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 that's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works oh it be not for awakening nay give it thou the berries for 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. No, it's from Geico, because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Good afternoon. Would you like to try a free sample of our double fudge brownie? Oh, sure. Mmm, that's very good. I I'll just take one more, just to be sure. Yep, still very good. Some things never change. Like never being able to take just one free sample. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Mmm. Is that macadamia nut I taste? Let me take one more. Sir, mm. Yeah, I thought so. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.